Hello, I'm Davina and I am recovering from complex post-traumatic stress disorder and narcissistic abuse. Now, narcissistic abuse isn't always um, really obvious, um, but what is, what can be really obvious is the way that you feel. And um, some common ways you might feel are, you might, um, this often brings up guilt, um, obsession, confusion, and fear. So if you find yourself in a relationship where you can't stop thinking about someone and not in a good way, I mean, you're thinking about what they did or what they said or what they didn't do in a very obsessive kind of way, you feel like you can't really stop yourself. Um, you feel maybe guilty because you've tried to stand up for yourself and um, you know, their behaviors led you to feel like that was, that was wrong or you were too sensitive or something. <clears throat> um, and just the, you know, the general confusion of it all, you're, I mean, that's, that's how narcissists leave us feeling is um, confused, like what's going on? Where do I stand with you? Why aren't you responding to my email? Um, they leave you, they have unclear communication. They use all sorts of um, very um, sometimes subtle tactics um, to manipulate and control. And, you know, of course, that's not their conscious intention. Um, but that is the outcome. And so, yeah, I woke up this morning and I just had a bunch of weird dreams and I woke up and um, I heard this guilty feelings got no rhythm. <laughs> um, and that's how my inner child tends to talk to me is, is through music and through dreams. So I try to listen carefully to what she's telling me. And I realized that she was feeling guilty um, because I've recently spoken up for myself and I started feeling like I did something wrong. <laughs> I did something horribly wrong for standing up for my own rights. And, um, and this is what, you know, I've been conditioned to feel, um, that my, my needs, my feelings were not important. So, you know, um, voicing these needs and feelings was actually a wrong thing to do. It was not okay in my family. Um, yeah, I also wanted to share with you some of the, some of the behaviors. Um, you've probably heard of some of them. I know ga gaslighting is a very, very common one and you've probably heard about it. Um, yeah, it's when they make you, you know, kind of doubt your reality or your perception, your you know, what you've experienced or what you're feeling. Um, and again, it can be really subtle. Um, they can, they might say, well, you're just being a little too sensitive or, eh, you know, they may not just not take you seriously or, you know, um, yeah, they'll, they'll just, it always feels like they're kind of flipping things around. So it's sort of like, <laughs> it's something wrong with you or you're, you know, you're wrong in how you're seeing things or how you're thinking about things. So they want to control like how you think, well, you should just think about it like this. Um, yeah. So that's one form. Um, blame shifting is another one. Um, so if you bring up a boundary to them, they might say, well, why did you, why did you wait so long to bring this up to me? Or, well, why did you express this in an email? That's not the way you should do it. You should do it face to face. Don't you know that that's the best way to speak up your boundaries? Um, so they'll distract, um, deflect, if that's the right term, <laughs> um, blame shift. They might say, well, you, you've hurt me. Your boundary, you know, you've offended me. Or, you know, you're just being a perfectionist. You know, even if you speak up a very healthy, clear, reasonable boundary, um, they may play the victim and, and, and seem offended by what you've asked them or what you've told them your requirements are. Uh, being non-responsive, the silent treatment. This is a very common one, um, at least for me anyway. And uh, 
It is really frustrating. And I realized this morning how it's kind of like a form of punishment. It's like, I speak up and say, this is how I'm feeling. Um, you know, please do this because, you know, um, I feel like this when you do this, you know, in a very non-confrontational way. And um, yet, you know, getting, getting no response, getting the wall, the silent treatment, and it's and then I wonder, oh, why am I feeling guilty? Well, I'm feeling guilty because no one's responding to me. So I'm feeling like I did something bad, you know. Um, so that's a that's a common one, and it's an easy one to do. And it, um, yeah, um, uh, stonewalling is kind of another form of that. They may just say, well, I don't want to discuss that. Or there's nothing to do. There's nothing to talk about. I have no hard feelings, you know, and they'll just sort of like wipe it off the table and you're like, what? I'm just, I'm bringing up an issue. Um, they may, may withhold an apology or they may give you some sort of false apology, like, well, I'm sorry you felt that way. <laughs> or I'm sorry if you felt angry. Or, you know, they'll, they won't own it, you know, and a true apology owns it, says, I'm sorry that I was late. I'm sorry that um, my actions triggered you to feel so scared. I think that's totally understandable, you know, like really empathizing and validating. Um, that is a true apology. But if they're, you know, not owning it, then it's not an apology. That's, that's the bottom line of that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> it's getting to be late. This is a long video. Um, and yeah, I think I've, I've covered those. So those are some of the ones, the, the gaslighting, the blame shifting, the silent treatment, withholding apologies, false apologies. These are all ways that leave the, the other person feeling guilty, feeling confused, feeling obsessive, feeling fear of course you're going to feel anxiety it keeps you keeps you guessing it keeps you wondering it keeps you walking around like kind of like um unsure and and questioning and and uh, questioning yourself and did i see and you're like i'm thinking hmm, did i imagine that maybe maybe I, i'm just taking things too seriously and um maybe it was just my imagination or it could have just been a misunderstanding and you start maybe um justifying their behaviors excusing their behaviors well they could be just they're having a bad day or maybe they were stressed out you know and you start you know you can start dismissing yourself because that's what we were taught to do it's so it's sort of this like someone's dismissing you and you're dismissing yourself that that it's actually even happening um because we you know we've been conditioned that's you know that is our go-to is to invalidate our own feelings. It's, it's like, I call it the perfect crime, you know? Um, so um, I guess just to wrap up this video, um, yeah, um, if you're going through any of these feelings, um, yeah, just have a lot of patience with yourself and, and, and love, just, yeah, just really, really, try your best to love yourself and that can be hard too because we've been taught not to love ourselves basically um and and be honest about your own um behaviors as well because often you know we need to also stand up and realize okay i'm not being completely honest here or i'm not sharing my truth or you know i'm continuing to allow this behavior to happen and not having you know a consequence for it um, or I'm just, you know, maybe not taking responsibility for my feelings, not setting a boundary where there needs to be one. So we also have to look at our behaviors um, and, you know, turn the spotlight away. And it's hard to do because we're so outward focused on that other person and what they're doing, what they're, you know, saying. But we have to switch it back and, and look at ourselves in the mirror and like, what, what do I need to change? Um, and it's hard. And one of the biggest things is just to sit and feel the pain that's under that. What does it feel like to not be responded to? What does it feel like when someone is dismissing you, um, telling you you're being silly, telling you that you're too sensitive, 
what does it feel like when someone's shifting the blame so that you know these things these things are deeply painful and sad and um that's the place that we need to go to to really change to really make deep inner change because in essence i believe there's no external world it's like you when i heal the inner world it's like the outside movie just changes like yeah so that's that's going to be it for today because i'm going to go off to work um as i'm davina at boldness blooming and i'm wishing you so many blessings on this very challenging and healing journey of awakening have a great day